Okay, the number three best film of the year is The Hurt Locker. And quite frankly, I was getting sick of these rah, rah, America, yay, yay, war films that I've been seeing for years. Now, America is not the issue in Catherine Bigelow's uh, underlying poignancy story, The Hurt Locker. Using drama of real-life war situations and the personality of its characters to make its point is what makes The Hurt Locker truly the best war film this decade. The story is told from the main focus of Sergeant William James, who has the unenviable task of defusing bombs in war-torn Iraq. We see the transformation and uneasiness of his character, but we also see the looseness of it. And he is played in a charismatic and brilliant performance by Jeremy Renner. Also, the conflicts uh, with his more by-the-book ally, Sergeant Sam Warren, played by Anthony Mackie, in a very toned-down but yet very, you know, full-force performance, is also also a great way of showing how the conflict of personalities. I guess you could say the conflict of, I should say, mind, mentalities, if you will, even in the army, do exist, and it can really be fatal to everyone involved. Now, James' recklessness isn't arrogance, it's just who he is, it's how he makes his situations work, it's how he diffuses the bombs, it's his comfort zone of doing a very dangerous job. And the reaction of the people around him makes the story just flow to the next scene, to the next scene, to the next scene, it just builds, the suspense builds like a real suspense film, but it also works as a real war film. Now, they just want to get through this, and James is not out to cause harms, or harm, sorry, but doing things the way that make him feel comfortable in a very uncomfortable zone, but it makes also other people feel uneasy, very uneasy in an uneasy environment. It's with the way they think of, of the world around them and how they perceive it and the different ways that in their minds they see it working for themselves. Obviously they have different ways of going about things and that's what makes this film's tensions grow. It's, it really builds for a fatal clash of mentalities between them. This is a fantastic film and redefines what a true war film should be. Now, the number two best film, the runner-up of the best film in 2009, is Up in the Air. Director Jason Reitman is on a roll in his career, first with 2005's Thank You for Smoking, starring Aaron Eckhart, and 2007's Juno, which was my favorite movie that year. And now he has a runner-up for my favorite film of this year. But what Reitman does best is that he creates sophisticated comedic situations with the best possible place many can find it real life. That's the, what, why the story of Ryan Bingham in, in a performance by George Clooney that may seem very clooney like on the surface, but really if you dig deeper into his psyche, it's a lot more complicated than that. Now, he is also, he's very excellent here, and it's another Oscar-worthy performance by a great actor who, in my opinion, I just respect because of his humbleness in real life. Now, his job is that of being a big shot company man for a major, major, big conglomerate. He flies everywhere via airplane, basically living out of his suitcase and has no real home to call his own. Now, his job, he flies everywhere, firing people. That's his job. He lets people go. Now, everyone now everyone at all the airports know who he is by name. It's, like I said, this is his life, which is why it's a breeze living his routine lifestyle and, and, and it's so easy to do his job, yet we don't think he's mean spirited because of what he does. And when he's taken out of that habitat, it's like when an animal is taken out of the jungle, he just doesn't know how to act because he's in that comfort zone for so long. Now, he does have two women in his life now. Vera Farmiga, seen earlier this year in Orphan, does a fantastic job as Alex, who, like Ryan, is very committed to her job, very driven, and their relationship with one another is very unique in the sense that, you know, they... Um, you can see that they're made for each other, but in reality, there's just so many underlying issues that are hard to overcome. Then, of course, there's there's uh, young Natalie, a new uh, new new person on the job who Clooney needs to take under his wing, or the character of Ryan needs to take under his wing. She is played by Anna Kendrick, who really blows me away in this film, as she's been nothing more than a boring background character in the Twilight films. Seriously, I wasn't expecting anything from her, and she really delivers here. And she just goes to show me that she's going to be an actor definitely on the rise. Now, we see the many traits of Ryan within these women, and that's what makes the story really flow, and that makes it, it makes it all the more interesting. He takes that, and when he takes Natalie on the road to show her the ropes, they have a kind of a unique relationship themselves, a kind of kinship with each other that's very different from most friendships you'd see. But Ryan's life changes, as does his job, and his adaptation to that new society that he's forced to live under is very uneasy and uncomfortable for him, and he cannot come to grips with it. In the tradition of films like Juno and Thank You for Smoking, 
Clooney's performance as Ryan Bingham is drawn from the environments that he lives in. That he's not an unlikable person, but he's in unlikable situations in an, in an unlikable environment. He is trying to do the best he can despite all that. And we enjoy watching him make his journey throughout this film. This film has such a steady, uh, I guess you could say, flow to it like Reitman's predecessors. And not a single millisecond of this film was out of place. Everything dealt, significant or insignificant, with the story. And that's what made up in the air work as the number two best film of 2009.